What are you simpletons doing? Did Game Freak save fossil Pokemon? If you recall last year, I discussed some theories about why fossil Pokemon would be appearing in the Crown Tundra, and it turns out the answer is because they're just there in the wild. This is actually something I've been wanting for a while, at least in some form. As Game Freak kept adding more and more fossil Pokemon throughout the years, the problem became obtaining the actual fossil items from previous generations. And while Sword and Shield did some interesting things with their fossils, the question became how exactly they would bring back the old ones. And instead of placing the fossil items throughout the Crown Tundra, the actual fossil Pokemon themselves are just out in the overworld. When I first saw this on stream, I was so happy. Ooh! Ooh! Amora! Guys! Fossil Pokemon just out in the wild. Oh, it's beautiful! Should we catch an Amora? I think, I think I'm gonna have to. Aerod Yo, there's an Aerodactyl just... There's an Aerodactyl just chilling up there. Should we catch him? Yeah, come here, buddy. That might be the... Yo, Arkin! Sorry, I'm just gonna catch every fossil Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, dude, I love fossil Pokemon. It was basically that one scene from Jurassic Park and how appropriate it was that Amora was the first Pokemon I saw. Ever since Generation 7, somehow incorporating fossil Pokemon into some area in the wild seemed like a possibility, as the Fossil Restoration Center was run by a man who wanted to build his own Jurassic Park reference on Alola. Sadly, that never happened, but now all previous fossil Pokemon appear in the wild of the Crown Tundra, except for the Generation 4 Pokemon Rampardos and Bastiodon, and we all know the reason why that's the case. But the question then becomes, is this the right way to do it? Well, I'll say that this is definitely the easy way out. They're still more exclusive than other Pokemon, since they're in an extra area that's kind of the post-game, but it's really downloadable content. In the past, I've stated that fossil Pokemon are special, and it would be nice if they were treated as such. These are Pokemon that have been long extinct, which just adds to the world building of the games. But through the science fiction miracle of technology, we can revive them because they're just cool and who wouldn't want to use them? This has been done in the past by having the fossil items encountered early on, and the restoration center later in the game, which rewards the player for their patience. Or the fossils can be found optionally midway through the game, and can be restored at a previous location, rewarding the player for their exploration. Generation 4 mixed things up in a good way by having the fossils obtained through a minigame. Because these Pokemon are extinct, there needs to be a challenge to obtain them. This logic isn't always followed, and by the time we had a good handful of fossils, it became clear that things like this might not work. So Generation 7 just kind of gave up and put them in a store. Generation 8 also decided on a different way of giving up, but not necessarily in a bad way. Because the Crown Tundra is meant to be such a remote location, there are some Pokemon there that haven't been seen in a while. This is how Calyrex and his steeds are able to hide out, as well as the Galarian birds and the Regis. But for fossil Pokemon that supposedly went extinct millions of years ago, I don't see how that works out. If in our real world it turned out that a bunch of dinosaurs were just chilling in some remote location of Europe, that would be such an insane discovery that was hiding under everyone's noses the whole time. Of course, Pokemon isn't the most scientifically accurate game, mostly leaning on the side of fantasy. The process of reviving fossil Pokemon isn't at all realistic, but something like this is just a little ridiculous. I will say that this isn't something too out of the ordinary in terms of media in general. In fact, the first appearance of fossil Pokemon in the anime has them all hiding in caves for millions of years, until they were found by Ash and his friends. This is similar to the idea of Hollow Earth, which has been around for a while in media, where there's just this whole world underneath the surface that has an entirely different ecosystem, including prehistoric animals that were thought to be extinct, like in the journey to the center of the Earth or the recent Godzilla vs Kong, which both fit in with Pokemon as far as the types of worlds that they operate in. And this is even a suggestion that I brought up last year. 
because the Galar region does have a network of mysterious underground caves. But the fossil Pokemon in Sword and Shield are just up on the surface, barely a stone's throw from the village which itself isn't too far from the train station that connects to the rest of the region. And with so many fossil Pokemon, there has to be such a compromise that unfortunately sacrifices the lore for the sake of easy obtainability. Because fossil Pokemon really aren't so different from normal Pokemon, except for the methods through which you would obtain them in previous games. Aside from the Generation 8 fossil Pokemon and their mix and match gimmick, there's no need for the fossil items at all. And I mean, they've been running around in their revived forms with some trainers for a few generations now. So the full integration of these fossil Pokemon was bound to come sometime, though it might have been cool to have a whole dramatic story around it. But even after all this mind-twisting, lore-breaking execution, I, I actually love this. As I was capturing footage for this video, it was so satisfying to see some of my favorite Pokemon walking around in the overworld ready to be caught as easily as any other Pokemon. And once you get far enough, there's nobody around, so it does feel like I've been transported to some kind of mysterious hidden location. When it comes down to it, I still think having a designated area, like a hypothetical dream park, would be the most ideal just for the lore. But that's something that probably won't come until Generation 9, since Generation 8 is all set and the next few games we'll be getting are Generation 4 and another Sinnoh retread. And this identity crisis of what fossil Pokemon are is going to be around for a while. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the Crown Tundra as a safe haven for fossil Pokemon. But anyway, hey, this is GatorX, and let me know what you think. What are your opinion on fossil Pokemon and how they've kind of been integrated in into uh, Generation 8? Like I said, I, I like the Crown Tundra. I definitely like the Isle of Armor. Honestly, uh, if we're talking straight facts here, Pokemon... Uh, Armor and Crown are better than Sword and Shield, if you can count. I love Armor Crown Tundra as one thing. But uh, definitely, I do like that. It's just really neat seeing the fossil Pokemon out in the wild. Definitely, I do think that it'd be nice if we had the Dream Park that was, you know, teased in Sun and Moon and really, really disappointed it wasn't followed up on in Ultra Sun and Moon, but that's that's in the past. Uh, as far as what is in the future for fossil Pokemon, there's definitely a lot they could do, especially, you know, if they're going to introduce more. They could also just take a break and just not introduce any other fossil Pokemon like they did in Generation 7 so that they, they can just kind of hold off, I guess, while they figure out what to do. Like I said, weirdly complicated situation that uh, really, I guess, there's kind of no right answer for, but... Uh, it, it, it's just neat seeing fossil Pokemon at all in Sword and Shield. And, you know, just the fact that we have all of them, ex except for um, Rampardos and Bastiodon, which I'm, uh, I'm interested to see what exactly goes on in uh, the Sinnoh remakes, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, that we'll be getting later this year. But for sure, I think... Uh, it's, it's kind of neat, it's kind of neat. That basically wraps up Fossil Week, I guess, or at least, you know, maybe there might be a little more. Um, with my recent schedule of basically like one video a week, I guess, you know, maybe it's not a full week, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what else happens. I'm, I'm trying to get some other things done, so stay tuned. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to show your support. If you'd like to go above and beyond, there's the applause button down below. If you think that I deserve it, you can enable notifications by clicking the bell icon. I'll make sure you see each new video as it comes out. But anyway, this has been Gator X. Have a nice day.